Welcome to our next video. We're moving to the subject of valuation. We're still within SEMA F3 financial strategy syllabus and we're basing this all on Express notes which you can download from the EXP Group website. We're in chapter 6 now and this video will be devoted to the discussion of various valuation methods. The descriptions of those valuation methods, you, you all have them in the notes. But what is important is to understand how they work and when they are useful. So, if you look at the way to measure the value of the company, because that is what we will want to do. You may look at it in a number of ways. The first way of looking at it is obviously, well, to look at it from the perspective of the company's financial statements. Look at the company's statement of financial position and this is where you have the book value methods but from your earlier studies probably from f1 f2 you know that sometimes the sop values have very little to do with real values that's because accounting does not aim to provide information about the value. The differences will be, for example, in non-current assets, which in the statement of financial position will be held at um, historical cost minus depreciation. Well, logically, the real value of it would be the selling value. Similarly with inventories, you also have them at cost, while in fact they represent the value to the company which is equal to the price for which they can be sold when transformed into finished goods. So it's probably not an excellent method, though for a number of businesses, I mean, you know, for them, the differences between book and real values will not be so huge. Uh, however, book value method usually provides the bottom level of valuation of a company. In other words, you wouldn't sell it for less than that. And you may be sure that it is worth at least that. Right, what the uh, book value method does not include is obviously any goodwill, so the expectation of future profits or brand values patent rights and so on, copyrights, uh, this is all not included there. The advantage of it is that it's terribly easy to apply. Now the next method is the PE ratio method. Uh, we already discussed it, so you should know a little bit about it. The PE ratio is just taking the PE of a peer group or a peer company and saying, okay, so your PE is whatever, say 13, and I'm looking for my P and therefore I will take it to be 13 multiplied by my E, where E is earnings per share or just earnings to get to the total value of the company. Um, we are taking the 13 from somebody else. Now the 13 that the market 
gave to that somebody else is a product of the market assessment of certain important variables the business risk of the other entity financial risk and growth rates now in all cases we must be similar to that other company in order to be able to apply that other company's earnings per share and uh, PE ratio in general first of all well we should be in the same industry meaning we should be in this very same industry so if that other company operates in two industries now its PE ratio will be affected by the fact that there are two industries involved and so if we only operate in one of those the valuation will be handicapped by that the financial risk the PE ratio of that other company will be affected by its level of gearing so if we take somebody else's PE let's make sure that the gearing levels are similar and finally the growth rates uh, now the other company's PE ratio may be affected by the market assessment of um, some important factors about the future the growth rates take the example of Apple right where probably half of the company's value is is based on uh, its CEO uh, who actually recently resigned so um, a number of factors must be taken into account because if we take somebody else's PE we must be similar Again, this method is easy to apply. You just take the PE from the stock market quotations. However, you must have in mind that if you're measuring the value of an unquoted entity, the value derived by inheriting the PE from a listed company must be reduced usually by 25-30% um, due to lack of liquidity of shares of a company like that the next method of valuation I would like to discuss is the cash flow based method um, we sort of discussed both of the methods that um, that are here first one is the dividend valuation method the dividend growth method if you recall from our previous videos um, we will be taking the dividend we will assume its growth and discount it at the cost of equity that should provide us with a valuable uh, method now the next one is considering the company as a never-ending project and therefore calculating its free cash flows and discounting them until infinity the way to approach this method is first to take a horizon over which there will be a detailed uh, forecast there will be a detailed plan of cash flows over that time there will be revenues there will be capex there will be working capital movements and costs just like in valuing the project except that now we're looking at the company as a whole when we have all that over the five years well that's not the end of the story because um, on the top of that we will have um, cash flows that are outside the horizon you usually will not model them in detail because well there is a huge uncertainty about it we don't know what the cash flows will be in the futures in 20 years time unless it's a very stable business so what we will do is we will calculate the terminal value of the company using some assumptions 
down to show it in the form of a timeline over the five years you try to model the cash flows and over that five years you will make an assumption and this assumption can be say that we will have 1350 every year growing at 2% per annum okay now we can easily calculate the present value of that terminal cash flow 1350 uh, discounted until infinity there's a growth rate so the discount rate will be reduced by that and that will be the terminal value now have in mind that this is the terminal value at year five so it needs to be discounted by one plus weighted average cost of capital over five years now in order to get to the value of the company for shareholders the value of cash flows must be reduced by the value of debt at the moment the company is uh, valued now usually when a company is being valued a number of valuation methods are used and they provide they provide the brackets in which the value will be so at the end of it at one end you may have the book value that will be the lowest value provided the highest might be discounted cash flows or PE ratio and somewhere within that there will be the value of the company um, all the valuations are based on assumptions and therefore none of them is precise so never try to approach the valuation as a process where a detailed value is provided it doesn't work like that it's just a range of possibilities um, where the value can be